everybody. This is Rainy from the Journals of Awakening. And I'm Ben. And we're here to talk to you about a book I read today. Oh, okay. Or, or, or yesterday. Uh, a book I just finished called I'm Glad My Mom Died. I know. For us OCD people. Okay, yeah, no, no, you have to speak on okay. it now. You don't get to waste any of these goldfish's time. Don't By us. Jeanette McCurdy. Now, you may know her Meow. as <laughs> she was Sam on iCarly. And I think she hates to be known by that, you know, so I feel bad saying it. Who's Sam on iCarly? The blonde girl. The one they like to fight? Yes. Ah, okay. That's Sam. All right. So she hated being portrayed as a tomboy that likes to beat people. Right. You yes, know? That's what I would have thought. That's yeah. horrible. She's she a hates tough girl. I mean, yeah. She hates being portrayed like that. And uh, she got started in acting when she was six. Oof. Yeah. Her mom, and, and she's really good at remembering her childhood because she puts it almost exactly. I wish I had the book for like a screen grab. But anyway. She starts the book by saying that her mom wanted to be in acting. Okay. So she wanted everything for her daughter, and acting was definitely the best way to do right, it. Right, right, right. And the daughter was like, Mommy, I love you. Anything for you. Okay. Right. So she goes into acting, but it gets so much worse. She's, you know, all they care about is how young she is so she can portray a younger person. Okay. But the whole time she hates it. She hates performing in front of people, you know, making stupid face. Like, she feels silly when she's acting. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. So when she's 11, she starts to get boobs. And, okay. you know, she's like... Then it's getting awkward. Yeah. No, she's terrified because she wants to stay young so mommy oh, will still love her. Oh, right, right, and right. And so that's what I was telling you. Her mom taught her about calorie restriction, also known as just not eating. And that'll keep you small. Yeah, my dad taught me that. <laughs> really? I mean, he said no more than two pieces of bread. That's all we have for food, so. No, that's not. No, calorie restriction. <laughs> that's not calorie that's restriction. That's called being poor. Calorie yeah. restriction is when you purposely not eat. It's anorexia. It's not eating. Oh, okay. Okay, so. Not we're... because your dad didn't buy any food. Yeah, so her mom teaches her this at 11 to. years old. And I say dad, and that's fucked up. Mom, you're just as responsible. Yeah. So, at 11 years old, she was taught this anorexia. So, from the ages of 11 to 26, she struggled with eating disorders to the point where, because she, she was also bulimic. So, she was at the point where she was throwing up so much, like making herself throw up, that she lost a tooth on a plane once because of how bad she, her eating disorder had been. Oh, my God. Yeah. So her body was just decaying. Yeah, yeah and it yeah. happened after her mom died. So she's filled with this guilt and shame because her mom died of cancer. And when they were younger, every Sunday, her mom would play a VHS tape of her with cancer and remind the kids how sad it was. And then, yeah, and then, like, they would practice her eulogies, like, 15 years before she died. Because her mom eulogy? was, like, what you would say at your funeral. I just learned a word. <laughs> So it, it's um really interesting because her mom abuses her so much. Okay. And this is a uh, that's horrible. I know it's horrible, right? But she's also like a funny person. So reading it, she puts in her own like when she was eight or so, her mom forced her to learn pogo dancing because she needed the talent. And uh, pogo. Yeah, pogo da pogo jumping, sorry. Oh, okay. I know pogo. I had a pogo. <laughs> pogo jumping. <laughs> All right. Pogo sticking. Yeah. And then she stops, and she's obviously talking to the audience, and she says, yes, I'm really good at pogo jumping. Right. <laughs> pogo sticking. <laughs> and it's funny, because you're like, you're reading the narrative of a six-year-old, and then she stops. She's like, I'm really good at it. Yeah, fun <laughs> fact. That's funny. So I started getting into the book before it came out because she was on TikTok and I was like, what? And then obviously the title's really gripping. You're like I'm glad wow. my mom died. Yeah, it's like, geez. That's harsh, right? Yeah. So 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 yeah, what's the outcome? Why is she glad her mom died? Because her mom abused her. Basically. Yeah, but even after death she's still being abused with her tapes and shit, you know? No, no. So the tapes that was during her life. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. The mom was would the so she got cancer the first time. Oh my god. And then she got cancer again. So the first time she got cancer, they took a videotape of it when Jeanette was two or three, and Jeanette? then yeah, that's her that's, name. That's the author. The girl. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So when she was three, and uh, she her mom makes her replay that tape every Sunday in front of the family. 
after she recovers from cancer. And then every time this girl on the floor is laughing and playing with toys, this two-year-old, the mom says, look at you not mourning how sick I was. So, how sick I was. Yeah, so, so obviously there was just a lot Dude, of that's, trauma. Dude, that's a lot of trauma. Yeah, that's, so that's then, horrible, guys. You know, in a moment, man. Yeah, exactly. So then she gets into, like, iCarly. And she doesn't talk about it too much. What was more... Because I was watched the first episode of iCarly yesterday. And then I went to... Okay. And then I went to the next show. She starred in Sam and Cat, which was a spinoff after she was an adult. Okay. And I went to, like, the last episode or something just to see her demeanor. And although she's always been, like, an aggressive kid, she's just angry the whole yeah. show. She's never happy. Yeah, and it's, like, So sad. they just used it to their advantage, I'm sure. No, because... Disney no, was like, oh, let's let's make her angry. And most <laughs> people didn't know about what was going on. So it was, like... And then Ariana Grande is, like, getting famous and singing and becoming what does she have to do with the show she's on it with her oh what? she's the other girl the main character on oh. the second show i'm learning things about teenage girl shows yeah <laughs> but so she dealt with envy and all this other crap and then emotions like, yeah and then the maker of the show uh was accused of like a bunch of inappropriate little girl things yeah. like on the show they have all you fuckers can burn in hell uh yeah. <laughs> on the show i love all people they have you guys. <laughs> they have a whole bunch of barefoot scenes or doing things with their foot so the creator of the show is just really perverted well why is the foot perverted because he had a foot fetish that's it. so he has a fetish you don't need to tell the world about it why is that perverted because he would it's a foot because they would put <laughs> The girls in uncomfortable situations and just stuff like that. That's odd. I would have never thought putting your foot in the scene is sexual. No, it, it wasn't. Especially with children. It wasn't something Barefoot that. Children? No, I know. And that's why he did it. Because the kids wouldn't tell. They're just funny foot jokes. He did right. it for himself. But this wasn't in the court. This is just signs of his. Creepiness? Yeah. Uh, like he forced a 14-year-old girl alcohol. Just to try and get her. This just sounds like the up. story of one asshole. Is it is. What you're saying. That's okay. What... So what's his name? Let's talk about him. His name is Dan Schneider. But Dan Schneider, you're a piece of shit, bro. <laughs> From what I can tell. No, everyone knows that. <laughs> everyone knows that. But he didn't start the abuse. It was just you know the cherry on top of what right. was going on. You're at creepy. Home. There you yeah. go. You're creepy as hell. Yeah, bro. exactly. Never come around my children. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, and it was, uh, I just, so many times there's <clears throat> people out there struggling. So, you know, Miranda Cosgrove. Who? Carly, on iCarly. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, Drake and Josh or whatever. Grew up, what? What does Drake and Josh have to do with iCarly? Because she's the sister. What? These all tie together? Oh, uh, yeah. I didn't know that. They're I see all... Drake and Josh. Those guys are pretty funny. But right. it's kind of new school. It's it's just, it's very new school. It's not something 2004 I 2004 isn't new school. 2004, I was 15. And I was six. So when I was 15, I wasn't watching iCarly and Drake and Josh. iCarly didn't come out until 2008. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's a different ballpark. You I'm said they were funny, balls, so. Me, you know. No, that's just a different interest, babe. Uh, as far as you... A Boy Meets World. Yeah, that was also, uh like older and played at nighttime hmm. older yeah I like guess, like but... 90s for sure so yeah, when you were a kid, kid that was my stuff yeah but when you were a teenager if you were dragon ball z teenager yeah i didn't watch tv oh I did you not job. have one <laughs> <laughs> no i had a job yeah. no I, I i really didn't watch a lot of tv it was just movies so that's what i think it is just then. movies yeah i guess we're diverting topics you we grew up differently yeah no 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 well, well yeah obviously we grew up differently you grew up differently than most people you didn't grow up watching tv once you hit like 12 not sure 13. i think everybody born in the late 80s early 90s is poor <laughs> i think it's just one of those things we were just not meant to be wealthy people we're survivors i mean you were <laughs> poor but they're it's because your parents had poor money management 
Maybe, yeah. I, and that's the weird thing we talk about it because when I grew up, my dad ran a kung fu studio. My yeah. dad ran a Chinese restaurant. And you were always broke. Yeah. But uh, we were always <laughs> out of food, <laughs> sleeping in a shithole. You know, but it was a building. It was like it was like three stories, you know, it had a backyard. It, your dad and mom just didn't <laughs> know how to manage their money. They were probably throwing it away every which way. He's like, I need a new sword for the studio. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> and then the studio just fell apart. Oh my know. gosh. Exactly. Like I said, my family a bunch of racist pricks, so those windows on the front of my Kung Fu studio, they got shattered, like, all the time. Yeah. People would walk by. It's a white dude teaching Kung Fu who's racist. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it was the most fucked up scenario. And then, you know, and then like... he opens a Chinese <laughs> restaurant. It's called a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> you know what that's called, folks? Cultural appropriation. What the fuck is You're what that's called? You're stealing someone else's culture to... It's a white guy with his white kids. We were working in it. You know, we were little. <laughs> because you're so desperate to cling on to some sort of, uh, some sort of culture, you know? My dad was obsessed with the Asian, Asian culture. Which doesn't make sense because you said that he was Native American. Yeah, yeah. His mother is full-blood Cherokee Indian. Yeah. So, so <laughs> his dad's white racist. I'm just wondering <laughs> why he didn't, I don't know. He, like, decided, like, I want to be different, but he didn't know how. <laughs> I don't know. No, it was your grandpa pulling oh. your grandma away from her, her tribe. Well, she smoked weed, and she used to call it Indian cigarettes. Yeah, that has nothing to do with anything. Which is weird, too, because that's not culturally appropriate either. <laughs> it probably is. She, Indian? Well, yeah, Indians use it. And they don't necessarily mind it as long as you respect it. But I don't like it because most people that use it don't respect it. So, yes, Native Americans call themselves Indians, mm -hmm. which is fine. Interesting. Maybe she did. Yeah, she did. She definitely did. Yeah, so she could say that did. about herself. Right. Just like, you know, I can call myself a white boy. But if you do it, it's racist. <laughs> that's, it's true. That's stupid. You are, it's true. But you are white. Indians are I'm not a boy. India. I'm a man. You can call me a white man. Make you sound foreign as fuck, but hello, white man. <laughs> <laughs> but you call me a white boy, you just got racist. Imagine you walk up to a black guy. What's up, black boy? But Did it just get real in here? <laughs> no, because they're black. They... You can't call him a boy. <laughs> okay, fine. Think about it. So, white girl, you don't find that a little offensive? You're not a girl. <laughs> okay, if we're talking about, it all depends on the way someone's coming at you, you know? I don't know. But yeah, you're right. Girl we argue about boy. this all the time, guys. No, no, I like girl, <laughs> girl and boy. And that's too Who are far. you talking to? <laughs> <laughs> gotten really good at this i talk directly to the audience <laughs> who did you, you're like looking for another opinion you you who is this <laughs> we need a third party out here and ben has him on his side right now huh oh, people <laughs> okay in hot ones they hot don't ones, yeah. talk to the audience you talk to each other you get your 30 seconds of fame at the end that's where you tell them hey you go check out Journals exactly. of Awakening, hit that subscribe button, bro. But exactly. Podcasts are for talking with each other about topics. No, we're not live. Well, check out Journals of Awakening <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> and five trailer park cats on TikTok. TikTok. That's I've, right. I've got like 61 followers. Wow, well, that's pretty good. It was at 63 yesterday. How do you unfollow a cat channel? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Same way you unfollow a guy that talks about his feelings. Sometimes it's a bit much. It's not. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for discussing this book with me. This has been <laughs> quite... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm talking to you. Quite. It's weird because we're facing the camera, bro. I'm doing stage work here, I know, here, I okay? feel like it wasn't planned, but... This I, is how... Know, see, because I took a dab beforehand, and I'm talking to you, and it's like... Oh. You're like asking for their opinion, and in my brain, I'm thinking, I that's don't think get, this is the way get, you're supposed to do it. That's how you get comments. <laughs> they want to answer me, don't you? 
Don't you feel enticed? What size do you think my shoe is? I'll trip them. I'll trip Let me out. know in the comments. <laughs> I'll trip this. This people listening on with audio don't listen to this part. This is for all you YouTube people. We're not live. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. This is pre-recorded. Like, I love you guys. My birthday is on New Year's Day. I got a lot of happy birthdays on the 3rd. And that's when my birthday podcast came out. So I get it. But she's laughing. Yeah. But I appreciate you. Still counts. Pre-recorded. It's pre-recorded. We're making this. What is today? It's, it's hot day. It's the 4th. It's the 4th. This isn't coming out till the 7th. So. In your face. Mm -hmm. And on that note. We thank you. <laughs> Peace. Peace.